Thank you very much, Anthony, and uh, good evening, everyone. It's great to see uh, so many people here. On behalf of the Reserve Bank Board, I'd like to warmly welcome you all to this community dinner. The last time we were in Perth was in 2018. We had planned to return in 21, but something happened. So it's, uh, it's great to be back in your beautiful city, and I particularly like to um, thank the Premier for um, joining us this evening. Earlier today, the Reserve Bank Board met at our offices on St George's Terrace, and I'm sure you've already heard that we decided to increase the cash rate by a further quarter of a percentage point to 3.85%. And if you don't mind, I'd like to take this opportunity this evening to explain why we made this decision. The board's central objective is to return inflation to the 2 to 3% range within a reasonable time. It's really important we achieve this. History teaches us that high inflation is corrosive, it makes life difficult for people, and it damages the functioning of our economy. And if high inflation were to become entrenched in people's expectations, it would be very costly to reduce later on. It would involve even higher interest rates and uh, even higher unemployment. I know that higher interest rates are unwelcome by many people, but the alternative is persistent high inflation and ultimately even higher interest rates and a worse outlook for jobs. And I think it's really important we do our best to avoid that. Last month, the board decided after 10 consecutive interest rate increases to hold the cash rate steady. It did that to provide more information for us, uh, more time to assess the pulse of the economy and the economic outlook. Since then, We've seen further evidence that the Australian labour market is still very tight, that services price inflation is proving to be uncomfortably, uncomfortably persistent overseas, and that asset prices, including exchange rate and housing prices, are responding to the changed interest rate outlook. We also received confirmation that the peak in inflation is now behind us. That's good news. But that has not changed our view that it will be some time yet before inflation is back in the target range. Goods price inflation in Australia is slowing, again that's good news, but services and energy price inflation is still high and it's likely to remain high for some time. And looking overseas, we see worryingly persistent services price inflation. It's possible that circumstances in Australia might be different, but this experience abroad points to upside risk to inflation in Australia especially given there's been a high degree of correlation amongst countries in inflation rates recently. So given this flow of data on the labour market, on prices uh, and uh, developments abroad, the broad judge that it was now appropriate to increase interest rates again. In broad terms, the board is seeking to bring inflation down within a reasonable time frame, while also preserving the gains, as many of the gains in the labour market uh, as we possibly can. Now it took a long time for Australia to get back to conventional estimates of full employment. It took three, four decades. But as a byproduct of the pandemic and the policy response, we got there. The unemployment rate today is the lowest it's been in nearly 50 years. People have more opportunity and kids can get jobs. Underemployment is also lower than it's been in many, many years. And a higher share of Australians have job, a job today than ever before in our history. I mean, they're significant achievements. Our societies are better off as a result of these uh, achievements. And I hope you agree with me that it's in our collective interest to maintain those gains if we can. We'll all be better off if people have jobs and the hours they want to work. I acknowledge, though, that we're travelling upon an, a narrow path here. History teaches it is difficult to bring inflation down while keeping the economy on an even keel. So we do need to be realistic. At present, though, the data provide us with some confidence that we're still on this narrow path. And I think it's quite possible that we can stay on that narrow path. 
that narrow path brings inflation down. The unemployment rate goes up a bit but stays uh, at historically low level. But if we are to stay on that narrow path, Australians need to have confidence that inflation will come down and come down fairly soon. If people think inflation is going to stay high for a while, then understandably they'll adjust their behaviour. Firms will be more willing to put their prices up and workers will seek larger pay rises. They'll do that if they think inflation is going to persist. If this adjustment in inflation expectations were to happen, high inflation would become entrenched and again the end result of that would be even higher interest rates, more pain and a poorer outlook for jobs. It's for these reasons that the board is resolute in its commitment to returning inflation to target within a reasonable time frame. We don't need to get inflation back to target straight away, but nor can we take too long. In Australia, we're taking a bit longer to get back to the inflation target than is the case in some other countries, and we've made the conscious decision to do that because we think by going a bit slower, we can preserve some of the gains in the labour market that I just spoke about. And the board's view is that that's the right thing to do, get inflation back down, but not, we don't need to get it back down straight away. But there is a limit here. If we take too long to get inflation back down to target, expectations will adjust and life will become more difficult for us all. In the board's view, today's further adjustment in interest rates will help with this return to inflation to target and lessen the risk of inflation becoming entrenched at a higher level. In the end, this is the best way of sustaining as many of the gains in the labour market as is possible. I know it's difficult for many people, but if you take a longer term perspective, uh, raising interest rates is the best way of getting inflation down and preserving those gains in the labour market that I spoke about before. Looking forward, some further tightening of monetary policy may be required to ensure that inflation returns to target, but that will depend upon how the economy and how inflation evolve. I want to assure you the board is not on a preset course here. We will continue to pay close attention to developments in the global economy, to trends in household spending and the outlook for inflation in the labour market. Once again, we will do what's necessary to bring inflation back down and that's the best way to preserve on a sustainable basis the gains in the labour market that we've had. I want to acknowledge that the combination of higher interest rates and cost of living pressures is putting pressure on many people's budgets and it's a really difficult time for many families across Australia. Real wages have fallen and uh, people with uh, high levels of debt experienced a large increase in their mortgage payments. And again, I want to assure you that the board is very focused on understanding these pressures on family budgets. We talk about them a lot at our meetings and we do take them into account in our decisions. But again, we need to get inflation back down within a reasonable time frame and that's the best way of preserving jobs. At our meeting today in discussing the Western Australian economy, we heard how retail spending here has slowed down quite a lot. We heard that community organisations are experiencing increased demand for emergency relief, including crisis accommodation. And there's also been increased demand here in uh, Perth for financial assistance and for uh, counselling. So it is a, a difficult time for many people and we acknowledge that. We also heard about the very tight rental market here in Western Australia. There's very limited supply of rental properties and rents in Perth have been rising even faster than they have elsewhere in the country and that's saying something. On a more positive note, unemployment in Western Australia has generally been lower than in the rest of the country and the outlook for the resources sector here is positive and the state's also benefiting from higher commodity prices, particularly for iron ore and LNG. So just as is the case in the rest of the country, there are challenges here in Western Australia. But there are a lot of positive elements as well. Unemployment is the lowest in decades, people can get jobs and uh, wages are rising more quickly. So there's a lot of positive elements and I want to ask you to keep that in mind. 
As you may be aware, it's not just interest rates that have been keeping the RBA in the news recently. A couple of weeks ago, the Australian Government released its independent review into the RBA, and that's generated a lot of interest in the community. The Board had an initial conversation about the review today, and it's committed to a holistic and wholesale comprehensive response. Broadly speaking, the recommendations in the review make sense. And I think they will help the RBA with the more complex world in which we live. So we're supportive of the general direction of change. There's been a lot of coverage of the areas where we can do better. That's understandable, it's appropriate. But I want to draw your attention to some other findings in the review that have received less attention. The review panel rightly concluded that the RBA has made a very substantial contribution to Australia's economic success. Our flexible inflation targeting has served the country well, and the overall economic outcomes in Australia have been at least as good as those elsewhere in the world, and the Reserve Bank has been part of that. The panel also concluded that the RBA is held in high regard internationally, and that our staff are highly dedicated and highly skilled and working in the public interest. We're a very strong institution that's served by a dedicated, diverse and highly experienced board whose members have had to grapple with very difficult issues under a great deal of uncertainty. We have a really strong focus on doing what's right for the country, particularly over the medium term, even if it's difficult in the short term, which it is at the moment. Today's decision is another example of that. Difficult in the short term, but the board's convinced that it's the right thing for the medium term. I'd like to take this opportunity to pay tribute to two Reserve Bank board members who will be retiring soon. Today's meeting was the last meeting of Wendy Craig and Mark Barnabas' term on the board will end uh, in August. Perhaps I don't, where, where is um, a Wendy and Mark, Mark, perhaps you can stand up and, and Wendy as well. And give... Thank you, and the applause is uh, very appropriate here because both Wendy and Mark have served on the board with great distinction. Over the period they've been on the board, they've had to deal with a period when inflation was too low. Remember that? <laughs> they've had to deal with a global pandemic. They've had to deal and oversee unprecedented monetary policy actions. They've had to deal with the economic effects of a horrific war in Europe. They've had to deal with a shift in our energy system a collapse in population growth and a surge in population growth, and they've had to deal with the highest inflation rate in 30 years. It's a lot, isn't it, Mark and Wendy, in five or six years? <laughs> and so we've had to deal with a lot of complex issues, uh, but in my view, the contributions of both Mark and Wendy highlight the importance of the Reserve Bank Monetary Policy Board having board members who have diverse, strong uh, backgrounds and that come from different perspectives. I see as chair of the board the benefit that uh, people from different perspectives bring to our discussions and uh, I know as chair of the board I really value that and I, I greatly value the contributions of both uh, Mark and Wendy. So thank you to both of you. I hope you know that the RBA has many other responsibilities other than setting interest rates. One of these is that we print and issue the nation's banknotes. This remains a very important function for us despite banknotes being used increasingly infrequently uh, for, for uh, consumer payments. According to the latest survey we've done of how Australians make their payments, Cash now accounts for just 13% of consumer payments, 13%. 15 years ago, that's not that long ago, the figure was 70%. So we've gone from 70% to 13%. It's a big change and I expect when I'm in Perth, uh, hopefully no more than three years time, uh, the, the, the decline will be um, uh, accelerating further. But despite this, 
The stock of banknotes on issue has continued to grow over recent years. There's nearly $4,000 on issue for every Australian. That includes $1,800 bills for every man, woman and child in the country. That's $1,800 bills for every one of us. I know um, I don't have my share, <laughs> and I don't know many people who admit to having their share. So despite uh, banknotes being used less and less for payments, um, it's still a very important function for us because Australians still want to hold our pieces of polymer. But the RBA is also investigating new forms of digital money, including a, a central bank digital currency. I think it's too early to tell where this is all going to end up. But history does teach us that as technology changes, so too does the nature of money that society uses. And I suspect that in time, we will have uh, new forms of money. But to help us explore the various opportunities, we've recently issued a small amount of digital currency as part of a research project with the Digital Finance CRC. So we've issued some digital currency and it's being used by the industry to explore the various possibilities. People are exploring business cases to see what works and what doesn't work. And uh, we're really interested uh, to see the results of that because I think in future there will be new forms of digital money and we're just trying to work out how to best do that in the public interest. The RBA is also the banker to the Australian government. This means that we process all social security payments, all tax payments and Medicare refunds. We're a big transactional banker. That's a very big and important job in and of itself. We also operate the core of Australia's payment system. So when you send money from your bank to another bank, that goes through the reserve bank's systems in, in Sydney. I hope that you all have a pay ID so that you can take best advantage of this 24-7 real-time fast payment system where you can move money between bank accounts in five seconds. If you don't have a pay ID, I encourage you tomorrow morning to go and talk to your bank or online uh, to get one. Pay IDs are not only a convenient way to make payments, but they also reduce the incidence of some types of payment scams which are on the rise. So I encourage you uh, to use a pay ID in your personal life and also in your business life. The RBA is also the regulator of critical parts of Australia's payment system and financial infrastructure. We have a broad responsibility for financial stability and we have the capability to act as lender of last resort in a liquidity crisis. We're also a large financial institution in our own right. At the moment, we have a balance sheet of $620 billion. These are all important functions that we perform on behalf of the nation. They're carried out by highly dedicated staff who are really strongly motivated to serve the public interest. On that note, again, I would like to Thank you for joining us this evening and for your interest in the RBA. And we look forward to hearing more from you over dinner about how things are, are going in this great state of Western Australia. But before we do that, um, I'd be happy to answer some questions, particularly given our interest rate decision today. So thank you. Thanks very much, Governor Lowe. As the Governor mentioned, he's willing to take a few questions before dinner is served. So I think we have, we have a microphone at the back and a few journalists in attendance, I know. But uh, guests tonight are welcome to ask a question. Put your hand up and a microphone will be brought to your table. So while you're thinking about that, um, we'll start at the back with Crystal. Hello, Crystal Wu here from Sky News. In the spirit of the RBA review, can you give us some perspective about the different views around the RBA board table today? Was the final decision to raise rates unanimous among the board? Uh, well, if you read the minutes uh, from the previous meeting, uh, that decision last time was finally balanced. And the minutes of that meeting set out the arguments uh, to pause and to increase rates again. Uh, we consider the same set of arguments uh, again today, and the balance uh, tipped the other way. And it tipped the other way because over the past month we saw further evidence of the strength of the labour market, the, the persistence of global inflation, and the persistence of services price inflation here. So the board as a group worked through those issues 
and uh, we reached a, a strong consensus that uh, this was the right time to move again. So both last month and this month, the decisions were finally balanced, but given the flow of data, we came to a strong consensus that it was time to move again today. We have one from the back. Governor, I'd rather be me than you. Um, I've been around a long time and I lived through inflation through the 1980s. Uh, for those that don't know me, I'm the president of the Parsons and Grazers Association. I represent a very large group of people that are involved in export. What happened then just about ruined regional Australia. It hasn't recovered from the inflation at that point. But you seem relatively happy about the 7%. It needs to come down, but not a hurry. It'll take as long as we like. If we had three years of 7%, that's 20% gone. And that's our margin. It's all over. There is not enough room in our industry to sustain that level of inflation. Now, the situation we find ourselves in now is not an accident. This was caused by a federal government that borrowed a staggering amount of money, threw it into the economy, and overstimulated that economy. You could see this coming, Blind Freddy could see this coming, from, from miles away. So the question I'd like to ask you, I'm an exporter, and we have covered this ground before. Do you have on your board, not the big mining companies, but the little guy, the little guy who has to produce a product and compete against Brazil, Argentina, USA, Canada? Do you have someone with hands-on experience of running a small business that can give you the real heads up of what's happening in our industry? And the other one, small business is the biggest business in Australia, and you said to me earlier on this evening, you don't have anybody from small business. These are the people that actually have to engage someone, work out their super, their, comp their workers' compensation, their tax. This is a, a massive industry, and you said you don't have anyone there. You, you need to have on the board some real people that are doing real things and wearing the brunt of decisions that I think you and the board, in many cases, are very isolated from actually being involved in. Thank but, you. Well, we have nine people, nine dedicated and distinguished Australians on the board trying to make decisions in our collective interest. Uh, so that's just nine, but we, we have a very extensive liaison program, and um, Aaron Walker, our representative here in Perth, uh, talks to businesses in Perth uh, on a regular basis, and anyone who is not talking to Aaron and his team already, encourage you to go and get his card and talk to him. So we reach out um, through lots of different mechanisms, including um, through Aaron and his team, and each month they write a report for us and that feeds up in, into the board. Um, but the, the board members, I think this is an important point, are not there to represent sectional interests in Australia. They're there to represent the 26 million people who are lucky enough to live here, and they do that with distinction. And we draw on um, Aaron and um, his colleagues in our state offices to touch into business uh, on a regular basis. Well, I'm suggesting you talk to the real job creators. Mm. Thanks very much, Tony. Um, Adrian, at the back. Oh, sorry. sorry. Governor, good evening. Adrian Lowe from the West Australian. Welcome back to Perth. Um, you've been accused since the decision today of playing recession roulette um, with, with another unnecessary rate rise. How do you feel about that characterisation? And given you've spoken about a narrow path for the economy since June or July last year, do you feel that path is now getting narrower and will continue to do so? No, I don't think it's um, getting narrower. As I said in my prepared remarks, uh, our assessments, we're still on that path. And while there's a lot of uncertainty, it's quite plausible we can stay on it. Inflation is coming down. It's going to take a while, but it is coming down. And the labour market's still strong. Um, unlike some other central banks, we haven't raised rates quite as high. And uh, uh, the reason, one reason um, we've um, not raised rates as high is we want to preserve these gains in the labour market. I, I think we can. And we haven't had any information to, to um, suggest otherwise. But we can only do this if people believe that inflation is going to come down. And that partly um, underpins our decision today. I think the rate rise today, I hope you all understand, 
uh, is because we want to bring inflation down. We're serious about it. We're deadly serious about it, and we will do what's necessary to bring it down. If you believe that, then I hope in your business decisions you don't put your prices up as much, and I hope it reflects uh, the outcomes in the labour market as well. I think we can stay on this narrow path. Certainly that's our intention. Thanks, Phil. One more back there, one of our guests. Uh, thank you. It's fun to be on this side of the camera for a change, so uh, that's quite good. Uh, thank you, Governor. Um, consider you the, uh, the voice of reason uh, economically, particularly when it's not popular. C can I ask you, though, about the economic modelling that the Reserve Bank has been undertaking? Because it looked as though the Reserve Bank was a little surprised with inflation shifts. Are you confident that that modelling is, is still accurate and reflective? Have you adjusted the, the parameters and the assumptions within it? Uh, and is it, is it still a really useful model going forward, or does it need to be looked at and checked? Well, we don't have just a single model. We have lots of them, and anyone who's done modelling knows there are error terms in models. And uh, we've seen uh, those over recent times. Uh, one thing we're spending more time on is trying to understand uh, the impacts of uh, shocks to the supply side of the economy. Because much of the inflation that we've experienced recently is because of supply shocks both in the Australian economy and um, globally. Uh, one issue that we're working on, I think, and we didn't, I didn't really touch on um, this this evening, but I did in the um, post-meeting statement, is the need to lift productivity growth in the country. The level of output um, produced per hour work in Australia today is the same as it was three years ago. No growth in labour productivity over three years. If that remains the case, then um, the challenges that we face at the central bank are going to be more difficult to deal with, and the challenges that you face as either business or community leaders is going to be, um, are going to be more acute. So uh, this is something that the central bank can't really do very much about, weak productivity growth, but it certainly affects um, our job a lot, and I'm sure it's affecting your job as well. So um, the call that um, I've made before and um, I repeat tonight is, as a nation, as business people, as community leaders, as government people, we need to put our shoulder to the wheel here and do what we can to lift productivity growth because that's the only way we can have faster growth in real wages, it's the only way to support the budget where there are increased um, needs and it's the way to improve our living standards. Last three years have been unusual for lots of reasons, uh, but we need to return as a nation to stronger productivity growth. And we're trying to um, model kind of the implications of that, but we do know if we stay where we are, life becomes a lot more difficult. But we're optimistic that we can do it, but we need to work it. Um, one more, and then we should let people have the There's some two journalists at the back. Can you fight it out among the two of you? <laughs> <laughs> Jessica Page from Seven News. Governor, thank you for your time. What is the quote reasonable time frame that you have in mind for inflation and how do you think that time frame will sit with struggling families who are seeing you all dine out tonight at taxpayers' expense? Uh, the, the, in terms of the, the time frame, the, we've said that um, we expect inflation to get back to the top of the target range that's 3% by roughly mid-2025. Uh, so that's the time frame we're working on. I think if we can do that, if we get inflation back to 3% in a couple of years and the unemployment go rate goes up maybe to 4.5%, my view is that'll be a, a really good outcome for the country. Um, we could try and get inflation back down more quickly, but how would we do that? We'd do that with even higher interest rates more family stress and a loss of jobs. And the judgment that we've made is that the benefit of getting inflation rate down six months or a year earlier isn't worth the loss of hundreds of thousands of jobs. That's the judgment we've made. Another judgment we've made is we can't wait forever to come inflation back down. So today's interest rate increase is about making sure that we have a pretty high level of confidence that inflation will come back down by the middle of 25. Uh, 
much longer than that, I fear, is too long because then inflations will, expectations will adjust and we'll be in that world of pain I talked about in my prepared remarks. So, um, and uh, we're here in Perth having this fabulous dinner because it, it's really important um, we get out, mix with people, hear from community leaders, hear from business leaders, hear from people um, in, in the in, NGO sector. So, you know, I live um, in Sydney and I go to work in Martin Place every day. Australia's a big country and we want to get out there, we want to hear from people and this is a, a fantastic way of doing it and you know, we're incredibly honoured and privileged to be able to look back at your beautiful city here and it's a, I look forward to returning here. Thank you. On that note, thanks very much. Enjoy your dinner.